Welcome back. You're still watching Politics HQ right here on News Central Television. I'm Kofi Bartels. Moving on to our next discussion, the Lagos State uh, House of Assembly this week um, raised the, the kind of dust that has never before been raised in Lagos State politics, um, at least since the days when Bola Tinubu was governor. Now, my guest would, would, would tell me if I'm correct. Well, the Lagos House of Assembly, you might have heard by now, refused to confirm 17 of the uh, a list of 39 commissioner nominees sent to them by the state governor, Babajide Sonwolu. Imagine that. 17 out of uh, 39. The list comprising mainly the people who worked with Babajide Sonwolu during his first term uh, in office was knocked back by the Mudashiru, or Basa-led legislative um, in Lagos State, amid criticism from various sections of the Lagos State Public. We have religion and other issues cited as being important points in the situation. Tonight we're going to take a look at Lagos State and what the rejection means for the polity and the unity of the state. Joining us tonight, we have lawyer, the legal practitioner Monday Ubani. Um, he joins us via video link. And of course, Joe Femi Dagunro. He is a public policy analyst also via video link. Gentlemen, good evening to you and welcome to Politics HQ. Good to see you, Kofi. Thank you very much. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro. The Speaker of the House of uh, Assembly in Lagos State mentioned the confirmation uh, had followed what he called, these are his words, quote, rigorous and detailed screening, end of quote. Um, please help us understand what are the factors uh, you believe are considered during such a screening process at the um, uh, House of Assembly before the confirmation or rejection decisions were made. What do you think they went through when you hear rigorous and detailed screening? What comes to mind? Well, basically, you know, uh, the whole thing is about politics and uh, it's about party politics as well. I, I don't think they just refused to confirm them just like that. Yes, like you pointed out, there could be a lot of issues uh, that could be attributed to that for not confirming these candidates or these nominees. But you see, the assembly, the House of Assembly, Lagos State House of Assembly, they are not obliged to tell us what questions they ask or why, and, and, and those are the things, the, the rigorous aspect of that. They know what the term rigorous. And but I think from our own little understanding of it, of this whole political game. Um, I mean, definitely, there will be security clearance when you are confirming or when you are scrutinizing some of these candidates or some of these nominees. You look at their certificates, you look at their uh, informations, their career background, and all those things will be put into uh, rigorous in court now, according to him. Because you, I think they don't want to find themselves in a situation whereby... Uh, the people or the public will now begin to query their own uh, rigorous, in quote, uh, questioning. So they must have put in a lot of efforts. I mean, whether this effort is now political, whether this effort is not what the public now expects, then it's a different ball game. And at the same time, you look at some of those things you mentioned, the uh, religious aspect of it, the indigenous uh, people aspect of it. It is not just about the religion alone. And you said this is the first time in Lagos. I think this is stepping up our political understanding. If Lagos State can start it as uh, being a peculiar state in Nigeria, you will discover that it will bring something better in the political arena. Uh, the, this, this kind of democracy is what we expect. It's not new all over the world. The assembly or the legislators can say, look, we don't want this person for these reasons. And in most cases, uh, the reasons will be mentioned. Now, look at what the, uh, sec uh, the press secretary said. The press secretary said, you know, this has not been transmitted to the governor. So what we are saying, most of these are speculations. Why is uh, Professor Akin Abayomi not nominated or not uh, brought back into the game? Yeah. Why is Omoto Shonok not brought back into the game? So these are all speculations. But I know that from what we are hearing and from what we know, it is the fact that there is something going on behind the scene. And yeah. before you know it, these same people, it's just APC. They will come back and tell us that it's a family issue. It has been resolved. 
<laughs> and the governor has the right to submit the same name after confirming or after you know sorting out this thing behind the scene. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of game. Yeah, Joe jo jo Fabian, interesting you. Before I go to uh, a Monday, Bani, you interesting you use the word family affair. I heard someone talk about it today. Um, have you seen anything like this before in in the politics of Lagos? At least since 1999, that the state governor uh, will be uh, will be stood up to by the the uh, state legislature. Are you talking to me now? Yes, yes, Joe Femidagro, yes. Yes, yeah, you see, like you said, it has never happened. And that's why we, he's stepping up the game of politics in Lagos. You know, if it doesn't mean because it has never happened that it can't happen. And it has happened right now. So we have to take a clue from there that because things have not been happening before does not mean it shouldn't happen or it can't happen. It has happened. Yes, they've set the game, and the mm. game is on right now. It okay. is now left for the government, Baba Jide Songwoldu, to say, listen, I know these people, and this is why. You see, it is not just the religious aspect of it. You see, there are some people in their local government, they said they were not involved. The Badagri guys are saying, look, our people are not they're represented. The Kenya guys said, look, I don't see anybody from my constituency. So it's beyond just uh, religion. I don't want to say let's make it just a religious thing. No, but it's beyond that. And I think these people, they have their reasons, whether we like it or not. Okay. Everybody wants to showcase the fact that I am representing you. I need somebody from my own constituency to be there as well. All right. Uh, thank you, Joe jo Femi Dagro. Let me bring in um, Monday Obani, a legal practitioner in right now. Monday, um, if you can hear me, um, what do you think is responsible for this division? I mean, 17 is a big number. Uh, only 22 out of 39 confirmed, 17 names not approved from what we hear. What do you think uh, led to this, this division, this rejection? Oh. Yeah, ordinarily in, the, in democracy, uh, it is actually a state as of assembly in the state that confirms uh, the list of commissioners. Uh, you, uh, the governor appoints. Now, the, the state as of assembly uh, uh, scrutinizes uh, those candidates, look at their credentials, and then look at their capacity, look at the issue of activity, uh, and then grill them. Normal grilling uh, should take place uh, in the house when confirmation is going on to ask them some critical questions on how they will transform their ministries and then ask the governor to actualize this uh, dream as, uh, as the governor of the state. That is what's supposed to occur in normal situations. But over time, since 1999 today, we have seen that the regular state of assembly and even national assembly have become a rubber stamp to the list that is presented either by the president or by the governor. Uh, and what happened over time is that Nigerians have not been able to uh, be a very good governance you know, because of the issue of leadership deficits. Now, let's now come to Lagos State and look at what has just happened. Uh, now, nobody has given us the reason for the rejection of the 17 uh, nominees. You see that they have found it competent, or uh, could they have been rejected on grounds of politics? And that is where the journalists now, those who are engaged in investigative journalism, should come in. That is something that is playing out in Lagos, and I can assure you that uh, uh, in the days ahead, we begin to know that that is something that is playing out. It could be that these uh, names does not receive the normal, have not received the normal approval uh, uh, from the Godfather. And whosoever wants to override the Godfather uh, will have problems with the status of assembly members who are mostly loyalists to the Godfather. So something is playing out. You generally should put your, your, your nose on the ground, put your eyes on the ground and find out whether it is well with Lagos State, you know, whether that is something that is playing out. Uh, but then if it is reason of incompetence and capacity, and they have found their dissident not worthy to serve the Lagos State uh, at this time, uh, in this last tenure of uh, Sawadu, good and fine. But I, I, I trust some people will tell you that I don't think it's issue of incompetence, I don't think it's issue of incapacity. It is more or less of politics, you know, that is politics that is being played out. And at the end of the day, we're going to, we're going to know uh, here uh, what is actually happening presently. Hmm. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Obani. I go back to Joe Femi Dagoro. The, um, the, the, some of the rejected nominees were part of Governor Babajide Sanwulu's uh, 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 first term. 
um, you know, and uh, some of them we have the likes of uh, Benga Omotosho, uh, former Commissioner for Information and Strategy. We have Akin Abayomi, a Health Commissioner, uh, Sami Gube, Economic Planning and Budget, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, for last, Shaude Adefi Sayo, who was the Commissioner for Education, um, Cecilia Dada, Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Olalere Oduso to Energy Resources. Some of these names are quite uh, astute individuals. You can see them on your screen here. Um, what do you think, you know, they did um, that probably meant that they were not good enough? You've cited other instances, for instance, representation by different parts of the state. Are these individuals not worthy of being you know, given a, a bow, like we saw in the National Assembly, by virtue of their sterling performance, a lot of people agree that they performed well in the first uh, instance. At least we can talk about three or four of them. So were they not, was their performance not good enough to allow the State House of Assembly give them a bow based on their track record? Femi Dagunro, please. Joe Femi Dagunro, please. I, I don't think uh, that might be the the issue at the moment, you see, I want to believe, you know, in, in, in politics, uh, it's, it's about give and take sometimes. It's about, you know, having this cordial relationship, understanding beyond what we can see from outside. And I, even if there are grievances, um, you know, sometimes uh, legislators or lawmakers or, or people in politics, in positions, they have a way of trying to express themselves. And this is a kind of expression from the Lagos State House of Assembly to the executive that, listen, uh, this is what we want. It, it may not just be these people that we've mentioned, all these uh, uh, politi or these nominees. They might just be, uh, they might just find themselves in a crossfire. You know, not that they're not good and not that they're not competent. But at the same time, let me point it out. It is not written anywhere that you must have two terms. It is not written anywhere. So if, even if you are good and there's something they found out about you, one way or the other, which we may not know, we might still continue to speculate or to guess what's going on. Yes, so we should not assume that because you serve the first time, you must, you must serve the second time. No, uh, but if all said and done, uh, we find out that, look, the situation, you know, the whole thing, maybe it's just boiling right now. And after a while, I tell you what, in the next 48 hours, we will see a lot of other things coming out from the uh, assembly and a lot of people are already saying something. Look at those who even screened them. They said, look, it's not about us. It's about the 40 members. So you see there's something going on behind the scene. So those guys said, look, it's not about us who screened this committee. It's not about the committee. It's about the entire members of this house. So something really politically is going on that we can't understand right now. You know, before I came into this, uh, uh, the studio right now here, I was trying to figure out to call my uh, representative there uh, for, uh, in this cons my constituency. And, uh, you know, I believe nobody's ready to say something right now until they sort out some of these things. And we can't hear much from them. Like I said, at the end of the day, when it's officially transmitted to Mr. Governor, you will end up seeing that the leaders in the party, they are already at work right now. Okay. They wouldn't want this thing to linger on, and it will, be, it will soon be resolved. I can assure you that. that okay, I, I, are, you, are you giving us some privileged information that, um, uh, uh, you know, what you've heard from the corridors of power in the State Assembly is that uh, they're working <laughs> behind the scenes to solve this <laughs> you know, issue? This, this is not a kind of privileged information. I mean, from political... Uh, Okay. You know, scenarios, you see that these are things that we have surely. The elders are working and they'll continue to work because it will, it will not be good for them to see what has not been happening, to just happen suddenly. And they should be able to control it. And if they can't control it, a lot of uh, issues will come out. And nobody, it will embarrass them. It will All embarrass right. the party. It will embarrass the elders. And they wouldn't want to be embarrassed. And the governor himself wouldn't want to be embarrassed. So it is not for us to come together. And I mean, the elders, the, P, the APC members to come together and say, look, let's find a quick solution to this. And I believe in the next few hours, in the next few days, solutions will be found and things will come to normal. Okay. Th thank you very much. A final question to... Um uh, Monday, Obani, because we're out of time. Uh, Monday, of uh, the, the religious religion issue, of course, is um, is a big factor here. Uh, we hear that um, the Muslim community staged uh, 
uh, a, a, a protest against, and we know actually, against the composition of the nominees list, citing discrimination against Muslims. Um, we, of, of the 17 who were rejected by the Lagos State House of Assembly, 15 uh, are, are Christians. Um, 15 are Christians. You think this, this, this played a role? Uh, how significant was the objection uh, of these, uh, uh, the protests by the Muslim community significant in influencing the outcome of the confirmation and rejection decisions by the Lagos State House of Assembly? Mondi Obani. Governors were in Africa and the government that is uh, in secrecy. There is no information given to the members of the public and as well most times the members of the public indulge in uh, speculation. Uh, the people who rejected this nominee did not give us any reason for the rejection. And so whatever you ask me to do, I commit to speculate whether it would have been the protest that was have laid to the decision now to reject 50 members who were Christian. They did say so. Uh, I'm only going to speculate. I'm maybe on it, I'm maybe on it. But whatever it is, what, what thing we always see that ask for in government in Africa continent is that people should be communicated to. The public should be made aware at every point in time as to government policies and okay. decisions to All avoid right. speculation. So whatever you ask me to do now will be merely speculated to. All right. Uh, Amani Obadi, and uh, uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Joe Femi de Gourmet. Thank you very much for your time. But, gentlemen, I'm sure you may have heard already um, that the Court of Appeal in Oweri, Imo State, some hours ago uh, today, uh, sacked Julio Sabore and recognized uh, that's the chairman uh, of the, or should I say, embattled chairman of the Labour Party, Nigeria's um, uh, leading opposition party. Uh, he's been sacked by a Court of Appeal in Oweri, Imo State, and uh, Lamidi, Lamidi, Papa. Uh, has been recognized, ordered recognized by that court as a national chairman of Labour Party. The court didn't just stop there. The court also ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to immediately recognize and publish the names of all the governorship candidates uh, produced by their Papa-led National Working Committee in the Imo, Bayelsa, and Kogi state elections. Um, while it also dismissed the governorship uh, candidature of uh, Senator Ethan Achono of Imo State and others belonging to the Abuja-led uh, LP faction. We discussed this only yesterday on the program. I wish I had time to talk to you about this um, Joe Femi Dagunro and uh, Mandi Obani uh, Barista, but we don't have time. So I want to thank both of you uh, for joining us tonight on uh, uh, Politics HQ. Thank you very much. All the best. All right. Thank you I very appreciate. much. appreciate All right. Well, well, we'll leave it at that. We know that we definitely will have more time to talk about the situation. Labour Party is, is getting really, really hot in that party, uh, Labour Party. We will be right back to give you something to chew on in a second. Please stay with us.